Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. Very exciting times in the markets. I'm going to start here with the Microsoft chart. I'm watching this so closely, I even took my trading view and made it into a Microsoft link. So you can see here, close up on the 15 minute we're approaching a trend line to the downside. Now, if you remember, I said I had no prior knowledge when I said that Microsoft can go down 90% and stay down 90% for 30 years. Uh, I, I hope I didn't call the top. But it is looking like it wants to penetrate through this fairly significant line. You can see it starts at the bottom in... December of 2023, December of 2022, so pretty old. Um, a big down day tomorrow, wow. That would probably be it, technically, for this chart. So the other thing is the indicators, the MACD, very bearish. Remember, the most important points on a MACD are when we get across the lines at the at a high going down, a low going up, and a cross of the zero line. Those are the three big things to watch for. And we're looking like one of the lines has crossed and the other is waiting to cross. So that's pretty bearish. That signal works. Uh, let's see places where it has worked and it hasn't worked. Usually it will work in a bull market to the bull side and it will work uh, and in a bear market to the bear side, but not the other way around. Uh, probably the most significant we, one we've got here would be this one right here, cross up over the zero line. And uh, we're in a bull trend. We crossed over the zero line there and we got a big rally, big buy point. Here we crossed over the zero line, big rally. Here we crossed over the zero line to this one are we going to cross back down? So, yeah, scary stuff. So let's look over at the NASDAQ because it's not just Microsoft. Now you can see this fan pattern. And I have, let's take off the indicator. You can see this parabolic fan pattern. This is just a, this is not some pattern that I drew in because I wanted to you know, make a work of art. This is simply a pattern of the trend lines that the, the NASDAQ has followed and how it is moving parabolically higher. That's what creates this fan formation. So uh, our, our latest trend line here is right here and it's broken. You can see that. Now that's not a real old line, that's 2024. The next trend line to go is one that goes back to um, fall 2023. But our next big trend line is the one that goes back to the 2020 bottom, and that's right here. And yes, markets move down faster than they move up. So we can get down there real quick. Um, I'm not really gonna make the topic of this one uh, pulling the plug. But, you know, that's definitely a option that the powers that be have is to pull the plug on the downside. And that changes everything. We're going to we're going to see how that changes silver. But just so no, uh, just so that it's noted, we've got the tech stocks going down. Let's look at a couple of others here just to check the individual charts, because a lot of them are the ones that I've been watching anyway. I don't see my Apple, unfortunately. Uh, so what else do we have here? Uh, not really much. I'm sorry, my charts are not working. Uh, there's the Dow. Not real bearish on the Dow. The fans aren't really the same, but doesn't really look like a reversal on the Dow. So this could be a rotation, S&P 500. We could definitely get below this trend line. 
Uh, it's very early. If it's a bear market, we're very, very early in the bear market. Um, but yeah, I don't have my silver chart here. There we go. So, the last time we looked at silver, it was looking pretty bearish. Let's put the indicators up. That's pretty bearish there. We've got the weekly crossed over to the downside. So, where's support? Well, the levels I talked about before, I talked about if we slice through uh, let's get closer in. One of the levels we were watching was that 2850 level. And you can see that's, uh, that turned out to be a really good, uh, a really good catch there with that uh, support line. You can see how it tested it. It broke out through it, it tested and broke through it, tested it on the downside, tested it on the downside, tested it on the downside again, broke through it. So that tells you that's a good trend line. That's one to keep in place. Uh, but 26 bucks is gonna be the next stop as far as the lines that I have. So yeah, 26 bucks. Uh, the indicator does not seem to be looking like it wants to go any more oversold than this. Uh, I would expect to see on a bottom, I would expect to see a lot of volume, that's not always the case, but that's often the case. Uh, if we see a lot of volume come in, then maybe. It doesn't really look like a lot right now. So yeah, on the downside, the next stop is 26. After 26, maybe 24, but probably 22 is a really important level. Yeah, so we've got this cross here at 23. The trend line is actually going to be closer to 23. The very, very long term uptrend line that we've been in since the 2020 bottom is going to be in play at about 23. So that's what you want to watch. Again, we talked about uh, if you're a fundamental investor. So I want to talk about this time about if you are a stacker, why do you stack? And the reason why I just said stacker, I didn't say silver stacker, because you can stack other things. The key concept behind stacking is it kind of, it's implied in the term. It's something physical that you can touch that has value that is not a debt obligation of somebody else or a contract with somebody else. It's not something that someone owes you because those can default. That can be the government owes you your social security or that could be that you have a pension fund that owes you a pension or it could be that you have a trust uh, and you're a trust beneficiary and the trust owes you payments. All of these are promises to pay and promises to pay can be broken. It doesn't matter who's making the promise, whether it's the government, somebody in your family, another party. It's an irrevocable trust. It's an insurance contract. It's a life insurance contract. It doesn't matter. They can all be broken. So fundamentally, Stackers uh, are people who, well, this is going to be one of the reasons we're going to talk specifically about silver, but people who stack things, whether it's silver, some people stack copper pennies, some people collect Pokemon cards, believe it or not, there's a black market in Pokemon cards. Some people stack and they believe they're stacking crypto. And we can go down the whole crypto rabbit trail, I'll talk about it in a little bit, but People could consider that stacking, but it's keeping wealth outside the financial system. Now I'm gonna show you why, because where the financial system is going, 
But before we do that, I want to look at a couple uh, long-term charts here on more research. Sorry about the white. Uh, couldn't get a uh, dark screen on that one. So uh, these are good charts. Unfortunately, the mid-70s inflation has rolled off. And I really like to have that data, so I may have to get other sources of these prices. But a couple of charts I wanted to show you, the real outliers. Cocoa is one. And the reason why this is an outlier is because you can see, if, if you remember the 70s inflation, this is, this is sort of that thing. Um, so I think the top here in 79, don't quote me on this, I may be wrong, but I think that was one of the highs in the 70s. I don't know how high Coco got, but I think it was around that 4K. So if that's the case, we're 300% from all-time highs. So Coco is a crazy one. Uh, orange juice is another crazy one because Orange juice has your, uh, it, it's one of those commodity favorite for, you know, like, uh, you know, trading places or something like that. Um, you know, with uh, movies where there's the commodity pits and stuff like that. Um, OJ has always been a favorite. It, it was the contract in that movie, Trading Places. But it, it, it's no, it, it was known for its volatility. If you look at, read market wizards and, and talk to the old time traders, the 70s was great commodity trading because uh, we had such violent swings in prices. And you can see some of it here. You know, you've got 84, and, you know, getting up to 200, then down below 100. You can see the low on orange juice is around 50. And I think it did something like that. So, you know, up and down, up and down. But this is... You know, this is just a whole different ball game. This is a move from a low being in 50 for, for years and years and years, decades and decades and decades bouncing between prices. And now we see 500. That's what we're talking about, 500. So these are the kind of things that you see. This is what we started to see in the 70s. Beans in the teens, lumber. This is early that, that was actually, I think those bull markets were 72, 73. So that was early in the inflation. Now that's pretty scary. So yeah, in, inflation could be coming on the rest could follow because it did in the 70s. So, but I wanted to get over to this article because we were talking about, oh great, they kicked me out. <laughs> All right, we'll try this again. Yeah. So I had a translation of this German article and they kicked me out. So I'm gonna summarize it for you. Basically what this article says is that uh, they, the, the uh, headline is the European Commission does not plan a central database on assets of EU citizens. Now when you, and, and so what's the saying? Never believe anything until it's officially denied. If you read through this article, scroll through it, there's a key section down there that talks about what sorts of assets they want to make a list of that you own to keep a list of all your wealth and it lists stocks, bonds, bank accounts, but it also lists cars, gold, silver, antiques. So these guys want to know exactly what you own, everything. Notice it, it's kind of interesting. It did not list cryptocurrencies. But so this is, you know, they're planning this now. So that's always something to keep in mind. Uh, many years ago, I spoke with James Turk on the channel and, uh, um, you know, gold money was a business that held gold in foreign jurisdictions for you. All legal, all above board, follow all U.S. laws and all tax reporting. Nothing illegal about it. Peter Schiff to same kind. I mean, there's a lot of people in the business, but uh, the idea is the jurisdictional risk of stacking your wealth. Uh, and yeah, 
When you see these kind of things discussed, you're talking about a serious jurisdictional risk to keep your physical wealth in Europe. Uh, the first time, what do they say about guns? <laughs> before they take them, they register them and they count them. Um, before they take your wealth, uh, they've already got, we, we know from um, uh, the great taking, They've already got the paper, financial, digital assets. They've already got those. They can just swipe those overnight if they want to. But this is the first time they're listing things like cars. And it, you remember, I think it was Larry Fink talking about he was so excited about the blockchain. And the reason he was so excited about the blockchain that uh, we can keep a ledger of all assets all digital assets, all stocks, all bonds, everything, every piece of property, hmm, maybe all animals and all people. And <laughs> what does that have to do with cryptocurrencies? Absolutely nothing. What does the CBDC have to do with Bitcoin? Absolutely nothing. It's the exact opposite. Bitcoin, the concept, and we're going to segue into that. Bitcoin, the concept, is could not be any further from the concept of a CBDC. It has the word centralized. Centralized banker currency. And the Bitcoin white paper talks about a decentralized non-banker currency. Um, so, yeah, but that's what they want to do. Um now, you know, I'll always tell you this is not financial advice, and I also tell everyone to obey the laws of your jurisdiction and pay your taxes. Um, and, you know, as a Christian, I'm going to tell you, obey all the existing authorities. They're put there for a reason. That's what the scripture says. So, but uh, back to the topic of silver. So, how well does silver fit the stacking um stacking purpose and if it does where do we want to stack some more so uh, i think i always have thought that silver is probably the greatest physical stacking investment out there just because i believe it's undervalued partly because it was money and has been money for thousands of years but also because of the industrial uh situation the supply demand situation so before I talk about that, I'm going to talk about the reasons for stacking. So reasons for stacking are obviously you're hoping to get rich. Well, I think everybody's been disabused of that notion. Um, another reason for stacking is you think there's going to be inflation. This is going to be the best thing for it. Uh, another reason for stacking is you believe that it's going to be the best asset to weather some kind of financial hurricane. Um, so the question is, is that, uh, is that type of financial hurricane on the horizon and what does that do to supply and demand? Well, we know that silver stackers are not the majority buyers of silver. It's for solar and, you know, solar pretty much replaced photovoltaic, although there has always been an underlying of electronic and mirrors and and silverware and all kinds of stuff and coins but sovereign coins uh, you know the the other reason for stacking silver of course was uh, silver for the people which is silver stackers can break their system and they can not only can silver stackers do it but a consortium of silver stackers or just two the you know the hunt brothers uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is that the Hunt, Butter, Hunt Brothers stacked during the 70s and they started as stackers, but unfortunately they were not very bright about getting into paper silver. That's what ruined them, debt and paper silver. But uh, they were stacking because they started stacking when gold was illegal to stack. So from their perspective, uh, silver was the best thing to stack. It was legal to stack in the United States. It was very, very low price. There wasn't that much of it around. And so they started stacking. Um, by today's dollars, I mean, how many ounces were around? Let's say there were 10 billion ounces around, you know. Um, 
at, uh, what was it, uh, to say a couple bucks, you know, $20 billion, what's that in today's prices? It's nothing. It's like a rounding error for government uh, spending. So that's another reason to stack is to try to break their system. Well, we, we can't convince enough people to do that. Uh, I don't know if the outstanding market cap of silver is greater than crypto. I, I don't think so. Gold, definitely much greater than crypto. A uh, trillion dollars, no. Um, let's say 5 billion ounces times 30 bucks. That's only $150 billion. Say there's 10 billion out there. Okay, so that's $300 billion. So yeah, that's um, that's really cheap. If the motive is uh, if the motive is using it as a wealth protection and expecting it to reemerge as some type of currency or wealth protection after some type of catastrophic crash, so if you believe all those things, and I think silver stackers do, they think it's a very good investment. Then where do you buy? Well, we're looking pretty bearish. Uh, I personally am looking at 26. I really want to see what we do if we get to 26. There's some indications we won't get there, but we definitely slice through 2850. It wasn't hard at all. And we're turning very, very bearish in other markets. Uh, the, a lot of other channels are talking about the yield curve inversion. Um, the U.S. two-year has definitely broken down. This is the, um, the rate chart has broken down. We were around five and we're down around 4.4. Um, what is that? A 10% correction. Uh, but the 10-year has not, um, it's a TNX, but I don't have it on here. Oh yeah, I do. Uh, so the 10 year you can see is starting to rally, um, but the two year isn't, which of course that means um, that the yield curve is starting to flatten out because we're talking 4.44, um, on the two year, 4.8 on the one year, and 4.2 on the 10 year. So yeah, uh, some changes in the yield curve, we'll say. So back to the main topic. Um, do you think that the price of silver is going to go, where do you think it's going to go on a fundamental basis? Well, if they're gonna pull the plug, uh, we've seen it in the past, uh, some of these things, uh, the COVID low, 12 bucks. Could you get it for 12? I don't think so. I think basically 14 is the low. Uh, 14 was the high, you know, for um, the, the period from when we had the last recession, uh, the, great re the Great Recession. Um, so yeah. Uh, 14. I don't think we're going to go to the same low that we went to on COVID. I don't think we're going to go to the same low that we went to on um, the end of the Great Recession. Uh, but we could easily go to 26. So what do you look for? Well, you look for high volume. That's what you're always going to look for for a reversal. Usually big reversals are going to be on big volume. We don't really see that, although we could. It, it's starting to form one of those little spikes, which can uh, usually mark a bottom when you have a spike. See, we have this spike sticking out. Uh, that That's a pretty good sign of a bottom. You can see it here, and we've got it here. So yeah, the, the MACD is going to bounce. This could be the bottom. We could move up from here. But uh, I don't think the volume is high enough. I think I want to see what the volume is around 26. And if we continue to run the premiums we've been running, it's going to be a buck 50 above that. So we're going to be looking at being able to get physical silver for 28.50. Is that worth it? Yeah, I think that's worth it. Am I going to buy a bunch? I don't know. I might buy some. But I think that's a pretty good price, uh, all things considered. Um, if you're looking to get rich, you're in the wrong market. Again, this is financial protection against 
the same people that want to get a list of everything that you own. And we'll talk to you next time.